So hi, Shrishti. Congratulations on the massive 730 score. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rida. Couldn't have done it without you. Again. So, Shrishti, this is, first of all, it's amazing because a 730 score is right up there, right? But it's also amazing because this is not the first time you're actually taking the test, right? You've taken the test once before? Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience, how you prepared and what your score was at that time? Yeah. So, uh... I gave my first attempt for GMAT uh, back in September 2021 mm -hmm. and I prepared for I think one and a half months for that attempt and I just thought that uh, you know the online uh, whatever the resources were available uh, those would suffice and I just did whatever I could find and then the official guide and whatever reviews that I could find online of how people have actually studied for the exam and I just took that as a reference point and uh, I prepared uh, completely on my own for the exam uh, and I ended up scoring a very disappointing 630 in that attempt. So uh, that's what I found. What I found lacking, in fact, was a structured approach because what I was doing is just solving the questions mm -hmm. again, like a lot of questions, but then not really taking everything that you can learn from those questions. So I think that was one major mistake that I made in that particular attempt. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so then after that, how, how did you actually like uh, get into the EGMAT? How did you hear about it? What sort of brought you to us? Yeah, so uh, after, during my first attempt, in fact, I was looking for a, a lot of, uh, you know, online mocks, uh, free mocks that were available. Mm -hmm. And then I happened to come across EGMAT. And then uh, I took the mock and I found that it was, the insights were really helpful. So um, it was like, it was kind of like an ESR report that you guys gave at the end <laughs> of the mock. So I thought that that data really helped me. And then, uh, of course, I saw all the content that you had and the uh, various success stories that were there. And what I was really looking for is a structured approach to mm -hmm. restart my preparation. And I've, I thought that EGMAT was the best that I could find out there for having that particular structured approach that I wanted. So that's, that's what drew me to EGMAT and that's how I joined the course. Okay. So you started out with us with the SE course, right? And yes. the SE course is, first of all, it's very, very detailed. There's a lot of input that you get, but I know that you also had some sort of extra help from our end, right? Yes, yes, yes. So what exactly was that and how did it work? Yeah. So uh, I would just like to add, so um, before I actually joined the course, uh, I had a mentoring one-to-one -one session. So um, uh, an expert reached out to me. Uh, from EG Matt, and I had a talk with him regarding the course and how the course would help me. And then after that, I decided to go for the course. That was like the final uh, push that I uh, wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I joined the course. So coming to the SE course, um, what I was seeing, the difference that I could see before and after the course, that was that was a huge difference because um, before the, uh, in my first attempt, basically I was just solving SE based on, you know, my intuition and thinking that, okay, this, this could be right. And not really paying much attention to grammar and, uh, the sentence structure and everything that is to it. So I think SE course is very, very, uh, comprehensive and detailed. And I think it has everything that is actually required, uh, for the exam. So that's what I found. And I, of course I got in, uh, some external help from, uh, the EGMAT team. So I had interaction with Payal mm -hmm. and uh, she really helped me with uh, the whole meaning based approach. So where I was going wrong after a certain point of time was just uh, looking at the grammar mm -hmm. and uh, looking at this is what many students uh, I believe tend to do. We just after going through the entire course or going through the grammar aspect of it, we tend to forget the meaning based approach and then just look at the grammar. So this is what I think one um, uh, feature of EGMAT is, which is you focus, re uh, you really focus well on the meaning based approach. Yeah. So that's what uh, Payal told me. And then she suggested uh, many videos to me uh, to really master that meaning based approach. So with that, I could really see the difference uh, in my SE accuracy. So it was, I think, around 50 or 60 percent and it went up to 90 percent after the course. Mm -hmm. So that was what really helped me. Yeah. So after the SE course, you sort of had to take a break, right? You had, yeah. uh, I think you were preparing for the CAT at the time, which is the MBA entrance exam in India. And yes. then you came back to us. And 
sort of how did that transition work, right? So you came back to us in 2022 and you started working with us with DJ. So what was that like? How did that journey yeah. begin? Yeah, so I had to take a break for three, four months. And then I decided that I will give GMAT another shot. So I was sure that I wanted to give GMAT another shot because I thought that I could uh, really push and um, do well this time. So then um, I, there was no doubt I would come back to the eGMAT course itself. So then when I came back, I think I started uh, with the quant. Mm -hmm. So uh, because um, what I found throughout my preparation was that uh, my verbal was still manageable and I could um, really, if I worked a bit on it, it would improve. But quant is where I needed to focus a lot and I needed to put in a lot of work in that. So then uh, uh, DJ, of course, suggested that I start with quant and I go through the entire module. So that's exactly what I did. I went through the entire quant uh, course um, so from the beginning, from the quant basics. And I think it covers everything that is required for the exam. So what I found lacking uh, in me throughout the course was really the basics. Mm -hmm. So that was where I wanted to focus and that was what I needed from the course as well. And I got that. So um, all the basics, I knew a little bit of this and a little bit of that in quant, but then I didn't know anything in detail. Mm -hmm. So uh, quant course really helped me with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, um, the expert architecture uh, that is there, um, what I saw is that it really helped me save a lot of time in the quant because uh, I could see that the modules that I had it uh, suggested that I skip a few modules so the modules that I actually skipped I uh, I was able to see that I knew everything about it so there was nothing that I was missing out so it was really helping me save the time so uh, that is how the yeah that is how the expert architecture helped me with that mm -hmm. And what I also noticed, like going through your account, going through your student history, is that one thing you did really right is that you did the modules and then immediately you went into cementing on Scholaranium, right? So cementing is where you really mastered those applications. Do you think that really helped you kind of get that mastery over quant that got you to that Q49? Yeah, absolutely. So I think this was one inclination that I had at the beginning to just finish the entire course and then do cementing. And uh, both you and DJ, you uh, said you said no to that and you have to do the cementing. You really pushed me for that. So then um, I just uh, I made sure that after I finished the module, I went to the cementing. And um, um, like mostly what that helped me with is to boost the confidence and really set a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, cementing process is very important, I think, for that, because uh, once you learn uh, the concepts, there are still many things that you are yet to learn. And I think the cementing questions, the questions um, and the uh, mistakes that you make in the cementing quizzes really drive home those different concepts. So I think that really uh, puts you on a certain stage after doing the cementing. And it, it gave me a, a lot of confidence uh, to move on to then the next thing. So that is how it uh, that is. I mean, it basically boosted my confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. and not just boosted your confidence. I can see from your stats and let's actually show everyone, you know, what those stats were that you did really, really well in your overall stats, both in verbal and in quant. So if I actually look at your hard cementing stats, you know, you're excelling, right? You're meeting that threshold. And in a lot of cases, you're really blowing past it. Right. Yeah. And what I can see is that you've also done just about, you know, 650 questions. And this includes all the five mocks that you took. So you really took away a lot from each question that you did. Right. Yes, absolutely. And I think there is really no need to do a lot of questions. What is really important is to take every bit of learning from each question and uh, preparing the error logs. Uh, the detailed error logs really help with that. And I think that um, by preparing those error logs and going back to it periodically, it um, uh, really, you know, uh, set that foundation that I do not forget any of those concepts. And it is very uh, useful for revision as well. So you started using the error. So revision is also a very important part of prep, right? Which is, I think, something that yeah. people might not uh, sort of taken. So they study one subsection, they move on to the next, and they forget that you need to continue to remember what you had already learned. So you revise through your error logs periodically? 
yeah exactly so once i finished the module and moved on to the next module every uh, four or five days i used to go back to my error logs and i used to uh, at least look at even if i don't look at the questions itself i used to look at the error logs because once i look at the error logs i used to remember that okay this was the question and this was where i went wrong and uh, that really helped me to not repeat the mistakes because this was one thing that i was doing uh, in my first attempt which was really frustrating uh, i was repeating the same mistakes again and again and then i was realizing that oh this was the mistake that i made and i still uh, ended up making the same mistake so i think once you uh, go through your error logs periodically it really drives home that point and that mistake and you will never repeat that and the error log is more than just concept level mistakes right it's also about the yes. kind of application skills that you use so did you see that that also changed as you really looked at your error logs yeah absolutely so um, this is what happened when i went from medium to hard actually so in the medium whatever mistakes i was making those really helped me in my hard cementing so uh, the uh, the concepts that i learned and the mistakes the application mistakes especially that i made in the medium uh, cementing uh, mm -hmm. those really helped me with the harder questions so that was what i found really useful that's great so you really i'm really glad to see that you carried forward those learnings you know you didn't just contain them in one quiz or your next quiz you carried for them forward into every single quiz and every single revision that you did after that so that's really that's really important right So once you finished the entire quorn course and of course all the cementing, then you moved into test readiness, right? So yes. test readiness is where you did those larger quizzes, you did those mixed quizzes with multiple different subsections. How did that really help in your preparation? Yeah, so I think uh, the test readiness really helped me with my timing issues. So uh, what I was realizing is that I can actually solve the questions if I uh, was put in a bit of a relaxed environment. but then if i was put in a timed environment i was always faltering because that was just um, uh, making me feel pressurized uh, that two minutes you know that i have to solve that question in two minutes that was making me feel pressurized and the test readiness really helped me with that particular issue so i could fix a lot of my timing issues and strategize uh, for the actual exam uh you know what questions to skip of course you also uh, suggested a lot of strategies to me and in that phase mm -hmm. so yes. uh, yeah so i think the test readiness really helped me with uh, with the timing yeah timing yeah. that's that's really important right so you mentioned a little bit about working with me so we worked through the last mile program together where i sort of gave you that extra push and a little bit of extra attention so that you could really get to your target score so can yeah. you tell so i'm sure a lot of people might have heard casually but can you tell us a little bit about what your experience working with me was like yeah i think that last mile uh, program and working with you it really boosted uh, and boosted my confidence gave me that little extra push that i needed to get to uh, a 730 so um i think when i was preparing on my own there was a lot of places where i was faltering especially with the strategy and that is where you really helped me with you know so um one thing that i was uh, that i had a problem with i think in the initial calls one of the initial calls that we had we discussed mm -hmm. this so what i was doing is um, uh i would i would solve the questions the first few questions properly and then i would falter with the second half of the questions so then when we uh, talked about this and i realized what i was actually doing so uh, what i was doing was thinking about the previous question when i was solving the current question and that is something that you really pointed out to me and helped me with so uh, that helped me to solve and get those uh, questions in the end correct as well mm -hmm. right so we talked a bit of a call i also gave you some personalized video responses and then yes. i helped you with your mocks as well right yes. so tell me a bit about your mock strategy what was that like how many mocks did you take leading up to the test yeah so uh, like you suggested uh, I, i don't think that there is a need to give so many mocks mm -hmm. because uh, you suggested customized test to me and then um, the test readiness quizzes also that i did so i think that was that very well prepared me for the d day so the mocks was just uh, like kind of a closure for me so just to you know uh, cement that at the end okay this is the score that i can reach and i think it was pretty accurate also so i gave in total uh, three mocks Mm -hmm. uh from the sigma x mox itself and uh, they were pretty on spot i think i got like a uh, 720 700 and then 750 and then i ended up scoring a uh, 730 on the actual exam so i think it was pretty much on spot and i really um, for me more uh, the mocks were not really more of a learning 
phase but just like a conclusion to the entire course that we have mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's i think that's really well put right that it's not the learning phase and i think that's something that as a lot of people feel that a mock a mock is a place for learning and it is when you look at things like timing or how to pace yourself but yes. concept wise you did all your learning beforehand you had your concepts you had your applications or in place you were excelling at them and then you went to the mocks just for that kind of fine tuning with your method of test taking right yes yes absolutely great and this was something that you really pushed home to me because this was what i was doing in my first attempt mm-hmm. so i gave ended up giving a lot of mocks and not really taking anything from them so uh, this this was something that uh, you suggested me to correct and i think it really worked out for the best I'm really glad it did work out. You went and you got a 730 with a Q49 and a V41, which is just, which is phenomenal, right? It's a really phenomenal score. So coming from that, coming from the fact that you know you really took a lot away from the course, from every single question that you'd taken the exam once and you knew what you did wrong and you corrected that. What do you really have to tell people who are either starting out for the first time or they're retaking their test, right? What do you what do you think is the best thing that they need to hear right now? Uh, i think that um, gmat especially is uh, more of a test of your basics so if you don't have your basics in place then there is really no point in solving many questions so what the first focus should be on the concepts learning the concepts and i think the course does that really well so um, and also i think uh, compared to a few exams out there in gmat because it is adaptive uh you really don't know which question from which uh, area you would get next so it is important to cover every single thing that is out there in the syllabus you cannot skip anything so that is one point uh, that uh, in gmat preparation stood out for me and apart from this i think that um, uh, gmat exam is not just a test of uh, the putting in the work and just going and giving an exam out there because it's it really tests your mindset and your attitude as well so it's very important to have the right attitude and most of all to believe in yourself so this is uh, some this is somewhere that i think in the beginning i had a little bit of problem with you know that you put in the work and you and then uh, you do everything right but then you don't believe in yourself then i think that you are not going to go out there and get that i think it's possible for anyone and everyone to get to that or uh, 700 plus whatever desired score that they have uh, the along with the preparation and the work it's really important that you believe in yourself and the, i think uh, what helped me was um, in this whole journey was not just the preparation because i was uh, preparing full time for the exam mm-hmm. so uh, what i uh, what really helped me uh, apart from the preparation and the work was i used to meditate every day and i used to work out so that really uh, you know brings that positive vibes and it really pu- pushes your confidence so i think we need to take care of our health as well during the preparation i think that's honestly that's really well said shrishti i don't have anything to add to that because you've covered you've covered the fact that you know you need to do the course right you need to do it with the right mindset and that there's more to gmat prep than just your preparation or everything you do with yourself you need to take care of yourself throughout your entire journey so i think Honestly we can leave it here you've said everything that I could have possibly wanted to say and thank you so much for coming on with us right you've had such an amazing 100 point journey which is phenomenal right and you've put in the right kind of effort and it's given you the right kind of results so thank you so much for coming on to, with us yeah thank you so much vidha thank you for your support and uh, for the entire egmat team i really couldn't have done it without you guys thanks